This is Leslie Kane, and you're listening to That UFO Podcast. Hi everyone, and welcome back to That UFO Podcast. My name is Andy, and a belated breakdown looking at the hearings from last week. Finally, being joined by the travelling engaged person now, uh, Dan. (laughs) Dan, welcome back, and congratulations officially. Uh, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, for anyone that didn't see, I proposed to my, my partner at Devil's Tower when we were visiting New Elizondo last week, and it was just, it was magical. So so thank you, brother. It, it means so, a lot. It's a lot of name dropping straight away, isn't it? That, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, but it's just what I've been doing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just before that, I spoke to Alex Dietrich, met her for a coffee by a baseball field. It's just, you know, part of my UFO trip around America, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and I... I talk to these people from the comfort of a shed. Um, <laughs> but I'm talking to you from that shed today, Dan. So um, it's been a week. There's been a few hearing reaction shows coming out. Uh, Alex Dietrich's just dropped. And do you know what was really interesting? I didn't know till I spoke to her how, got not uninterested, but you know how like the UFO subject doesn't really touch her life. And she's very much happy with that. And uh, the feedback's been really nice already, but there's been a few people like, oh, I didn't like how disinterested in the topic she seemed and i'm like yeah but that's that's fine not everyone has to be mega into ufos and that can that can be refreshing as well she wasn't detrimental she was very honest and factual um and we actually had a really nice chat after we stopped recording as well that i wish some people had heard some of that because uh, i think she was almost more (laughs) relaxed at that point as well um yeah lovely yeah really nice i I know exactly what you mean when, when we met there was maybe a bit of the conversation that touched on U- UFOs, but it was mostly about like critical thinking, humanitarian efforts, you know, just stuff that we're all interested in. And you're Speak also yourself. right to point out uh, <laughs> um, that, you know, not not everyone that's touched by this UFO stuff is heavily affected by it. Uh, you know, Alex is a clearly a very caring and altruistic person anyway. And that seems to be the change for people. You know, you look at people from Ariel, the kids that grew up and went into like human rights lawyers and and stuff like that. If you're already altruistic, I guess there's not really a a conscious change to make, you know? But also just just the fact, and I've touched on this a few times before, and I think this is maybe relevant to what we're going to start talking about in a minute, is like people people have lives. And I get your, your recent life, Dan, you've been very involved in, going and traveling and chatting to folks about ufos but you don't spend your whole day obsessing over ufos you know you've got stuff to do people you talk to you spend time with elena with lamb chop the dog um i've got wife kids job you know this this kind of comes and goes and takes up a large part of my life but that that's fine that's my choice wait you don't live in the shed i do not not yet (laughs) not yet uh alex has three young kids like she mentioned like myself um she had her her cancer diagnosis last year mm-hmm. needed to get that operated on which again she mentioned and she has a job a life and it's a busy one as well so how how much the ufo topic touches on everyone's lives is very different there's there's the kind of small minority of folks who manage to spend a lot of time on ufo social medias which is great enjoy seeing a lot of their commentary not all of it um but there's those folks like i see i hear from people all the time who are like listen to the podcast for three years um and this is the first time getting in touch i'm not on social media and that yeah. is the first time they're maybe having a conversation about ufos um and that's so it was interesting to hear there's someone like alex who had an incredible experience and we she had that chat around you know people expect her to feel differently about it than she does but it is what it is and it, you know it happened and and that was it and she managed to move on from it and that's that's totally fair. And people forget that that there are lives that go on around the UFO topic in different ways as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and it speaks to what we touch on as well. Like if disclosure happened, what's you know, people is the world gonna burn down overnight? No, most yes. people still have to go to work the mo- yep. in the morning. They've still got bills to pay, they've still got kids to look after. So, you know, it, it kind of speaks to that that rollout being more of a yeah, we need we need to achieve indifference with this, you know. Yeah. People just, just internalize it and Alex speaks so well on the subject and it, it's almost great to have someone that has had such an incredible experience that, that isn't, whose life isn't dripping in UFO stuff, you know? Yeah. So it's a really interesting perspective. Speaking of dripping in UFO stuff, we were sogging wet last week, weren't we, Dan, with it? Um, so the hearings happened <laughs> and Dan, I'll, I'll be honest, you went into it a bit more pessimistic than usual. It wasn't I your did, yeah. I'm super excited self on this. Um, and 
I think you came out at like almost everyone else kind of pleasantly surprised. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was really bullish going into it. I was, is bullish the right word? Conservative. Um, giving, you know, Tim, Tim Paget a hard time and stuff like that. I was worried. I'll be honest. You, you know, if uh, if we had a bad hearing, it could have affected the legislation being voted on going through uh, from Chuck Schumer or all of this new UAP language. And, you know, Tim, Tim Burchett said uh, that they were going to have the rock stars at the hearing. And I was worried that that was going to be Fravor. It was going to be Graves. And you know what? Ali Crow, <laughs> I was proven wrong. They smashed it. It was a complete home run. You, you know, we when we do these things or when they do these things, we want it to generate conversation. We want it to hit the news in a big way. We want people to take it seriously and a new interest to come. And we got that, you know, we, we had yeah. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We had um, Jeff Jackson from uh, North Carolina and also I, I forget Lizzo. the guy's name. Lizzo, <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, a whole bunch of new senators we saw in the hearings that we just haven't seen interact with this subject before, and they're all taking it seriously. They all want to go in the skiff with David Grush and talk to him properly and, and see this classified data. What more could we ask for? It was it was a home run. I, I'm eating my words on that one. Well done 100%. to everyone. If any of them happen to be listening, just hats off. What are the odds in the next year? David Grush, the podcast called In the Skiff with David Grush. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just just when you said that, it's a great title for a podcast. I might get in touch with them and say, look, I'll produce that for you. I've got the title. Yeah, go in the Skiff, yeah. Up the yeah. Skiff, maybe? I don't know. Up, up the Skiff, yeah. <laughs> Skiffing with Grush. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think he was, and you used the word rock star. He was the star of the show. And I think we're not going to go through too much of what happened because it's been touched on already but the first time you've yeah. spoke about it at length so we'll touch on a few things but i think more importantly the fallout and the reaction's been good going forward i think it's fair to say already in the uk things have died down quite a bit um i don't know dan you're over in the us obviously how have, well, how have you seen the kind of news cycle there so the thing that I've learned, you know, the news changes depending on where you are. And, and the thing that's standing out from the UK for me at the moment is one, Rishi Sunak apparently being mean, which, you know, is, is a default for, for a Tory. And two, Boris Johnson going on, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Um, I had seen neither of those things that I am literally <laughs> oh, really? in the UK, That's interesting. That's how busy my life is. Yeah. So but, I had But that speaks to it, right? I, I think we all, like our Twitter feeds, you know, some people sometimes say to me, or our X feeds, I should say now. Um, no, no, Twitter's fine. I'm still going with Twitter. <laughs> we'll stick to it. Yeah. Um, it's like UFO, UAP. We refuse to change. Yeah. Um, you know, pe- people think that there's one timeline, that there's one stream of news that we all get around the world. That's not the case. Depending on where you are, things are covered in different ways. Um, I've barely seen the the UAP or the UFO hearings in the news here. And I don't mean the online articles. I just mean, you know, when I've caught the news on the TV, it hasn't been on. Um, I've only caught it for like 20 seconds at a time or something. But uh, I, I know you were on a couple of BBC shows and a whole bunch of other things. So congrats on that, brother. Um, yeah. Talking yeah. about it in the UK. Prefer, prefer You're the, the face of disclosure. No, not this face. I definitely <laughs> prefer the radio. Yeah. Although I had a GB news appearance that lasted 30 seconds on Saturday. 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. It's, Te- it's technical all issues. some need. The audio totally dropped, but I, I was. Do you know what? I was really professional. Um, I've seen enough TV interviews to know what it's like when things go wrong. So, um, when they came, I could see her talking, and just you know the vo- the mouth was going, but nothing was coming through. Oh, and no. I just stopped for a second, and then the camera on on the software, it was just on my phone, went like full screen to me, and I just said. You know, I can't hear a word you're saying just in case the audio is still coming through. I have no idea what you said. And I just sat smiling at the camera, hoping they would cut me off. And they did. So Nice. That's good. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember the interview Lou did where um, that happened? The reporter dropped off and he just spoke for like five minutes about the pillars of influence and things oh, like no. that. He, he was, you know, a champ, very professional as well. You know, you just crack on and, and do your best. And then, yeah, you, you get kicked off, I guess. Here, here's a bit of a sidebar. Um and just, just curious, throwing it, throwing it out there, a lot of people championing News Nation for their continued coverage. I, I had one journalist speaking to me the other day, um, and I mentioned that in the US, News Nation were picking up the story and kind of running with it. And they didn't feel that was really necessarily the big thing that some folk are saying it is, in the sense they feel it's just a small network trying to make their name using the UFO topic. And when the chance comes... They, they dump that like a hot potato and, and move on to something else. 
because it's just generating clicks and social media stuff just now. But to be fair, that's that's how most of the news media work these days anyway, on clicks and views. It's not that they genuinely care about the UFO topic. You know, if there was a bigger, better story for them to, to run with, then, then fair enough. So it's as much, I think, people in the UFO community can use News Nation and their their current interest as much as News Nation can use the UFO community. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's one of those beneficial relationships, isn't it? Like we want it out there, so a new channel talking about it makes more new channels talk about it. Yeah, um, you know they've we done hope. a really good job. We hope they, they've done a really good job, kind of presenting everything seriously and not getting too crazy with the speculation. You, you know, they they've just kind of having the conversation. Yeah, if they want to do that while we figure out disclosure, I'm cool with that. You, you know, you, news media has to. It, it runs on clicks and views, you know, so they kind of have to go for it. And and it's very clear, you know, it's kind of a, a Ouroboros, right? The, they did that initial interview with Grouch. They got a huge amount of interest. So then yeah. they follow up with another story because there's interest. Like, is that a bad thing? I, I don't know that it is. No, that, that's what I said to the, the, the journalist in question. I'll just leave private. It was nothing, no one special, not a celebrity or anything. But I made the point that everyone's jumped on this story. You know, the last Wednesday was the hearing. And I had loads of people get in touch on Wednesday night and Thursday for interviews and then done those Thursday, Friday. And almost every one of them who I had the chance to speak to, when they asked about, you know, these hearings and the stories blown up, and I said, you know, a lot of this has been said months ago. Yeah. And and I mentioned News Nation and I was like, the story was there from Ross Coulter. You know, he he broke it through News Nation with David Grush. And this is just it being presented in a different way. And now you've all kind of got on board and I just hoped and mentioned to several of them that you can kind of stick with it because there is a story. You know, people use that phrase, there's a there there. And I know folks, some, a lot of folks <laughs> hate that, but there's a story there. And that if, if these media outlets want to really pick up on it and what I found quite refreshing, some of the folks reaching out to me, whether they were producers or anything, were, were quite young for various networks. Yeah. Um, and I tried to speak to them to say, you know, especially with TikTok and Instagram and all these sites, you know, are, are picking up big numbers on the UFO topic. There's an interest there from a young generation, you know, going right the way through. So stick with it. And it's something, it's something different to talk about and something pretty incredible to talk about. But as I said that the, the Trump indictment came up that kind of started to take over a bit of the news cycle. And, and I think Goodbye the news cycle news. in the UK is kind of slipped back into most of the normal stuff as well. And I feel we'll, we'll, it'll, it'll go quiet again until we get, well, Dan, let's actually mention it now. Um, the, the UF UAP unclassified report, I believe yeah. is due out in the next month. Is that right? In the this next month? month? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we're due this new unclassified report. This will be the first one that Arrow is doing that honors the legislation that was passed last year. So right now, a lot of people are chomping at the bit for Kirkpatrick's job because uh, we'll talk about it in a sec, but he basically posted a letter to LinkedIn that was less than favoring towards the, the hearings. I, yeah, I think some folk are expecting the report to be uh, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick shitting on a piece of paper and uh, posting it online. It. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to to as, a public as website they haven't made, even though they've been asked to make one. Yep. One last um, middle finger to the UFO community before he, before yeah. he rides off into the sunset. God bless I, him. I wonder if there's an aspect of, you know, falling on the sword. I, I've said before that what I'd heard about him was that he loves chess, but has realized the game is rigged. Once you realize the game is rigged, do you carry on playing or do you just walk away? I, I feel like he's gotten to a point where he just wants to walk away and, and that LinkedIn post may or may not have led to him, you know, being being kicked out. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. But it, it certainly seems like it was something that he wasn't meant to do uh, and he wasn't meant to speak for you know, arrow publicly like and that without going through public affairs. Let's not assume everyone knows what we're talking about. If they're sure, just picking yeah, this yeah. up after a week or two, Dan, Sean Kirkpatrick issued a statement on LinkedIn that was a little bit of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Any one of those phrases you want to use, very much unhappy with David Grush. I think I said to Tim McMillan, it was like one of those statements where you've broken up with your ex, you've tried to keep it amicable, but they have posted something kind of bitchy on Facebook and you're now <laughs> posting some things passive aggressively back at them without naming them and being like, you know, other people might want to keep these things to themselves, but I feel I should say my piece. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, some folks have to blah 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 blah, and that's it. it came across almost a little bit petty. Um, yeah, it did because and he wasn't named directly, and I don't think it was 
to be actually, I may, I did make a note when I was watching the hearings that Arrow was thrown under the bus a little bit by by David Grush, and I can't remember the exact moment, but I just felt it was like almost in passing that Arrow weren't really doing their job properly. But I think exactly. that's quite a common feeling amongst most yeah. folk, isn't it? Not yeah, hundred percent. Like what what um I think what Grush said was basically like you know hey I spoke to Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick and he didn't follow up with me to to investigate the leads that I gave him as far as I know. That's fair. That's a fairly factual statement. If he hasn't, you know, there's there's not that much emotion in that. Uh, Grush was very composed and you know didn't didn't get catty when he was saying it. Um, so seeing that response was you know I I, I didn't feel like it was a warranted response from Kirkpatrick to to say those things and to say. You know, he was going hard and, and criticizing all the men and women that worked for Arrow. I feel like it was a fair thing to say. You know, it's like describing this guy as, as blue. Um, if that's what it is, that's what it is. And then, yeah, Kirkpatrick has gotten very catty and, and come out swinging. Said that it was his personal opinion, but then he's spoken for Arrow in the last paragraph and said that Arrow has found no evidence of, you know, extra trash to your life and things like that. Um so, yeah, you, you got to kind of take it as it is. It probably should have gone through public affairs, but at the same time, maybe it's good that it didn't. Maybe it's good that we get a chance to refresh who's in charge of the ship and maybe even reposition the ship outside of the, you know, DOD's control now. Uh, and, hopefully and see, that's see, to be fair, fallout. sorry, cool. to be fair, Arrow probably hasn't found, and no, Arrow almost definitely hasn't found any evidence of extraterrestrial life, and that's it's fine. Trick. <laughs> that's that's yes. that's not the point and that's that's not what people are getting annoyed at the fact is there seems to be a lot of evidence there for something and dr sean kirkpatrick's leadership seems to be totally missing a lot of that despite or, us having evidence that they've been told where to look exactly where to look and where to follow up and they just don't seem to be doing it here's an analogy for you so on. you know the original willy wonka in the chocolate factory and I yes. call it that because that's the name of it. Um, the, Gene Wil- <laughs> the Gene Wilder one that wasn't Charlie, it was Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Um, the best one so far. Um, and you know that moment where they go into the room where they have to like go out the other side and then they turn around and go back through the door? It's like yes. he seems permanently stuck in that corridor. Sure. And people are telling him, there's, def- there's definitely chocolate on the other side of that door. And he's going, nah, and he's punching the balls and he's stuck there going, look, let's just turn around <laughs> and go back. Um, he's, just, he's just stuck in this little corridor of... I'm asking people, I'm asking the questions, I'm not finding any alien life and let's just let's just move on. And it's like, well, no, because there seems to be all this stuff around you where people are talking and it's just being ignored or you're not getting in touch with them. Um, and Arrow just already seems, and it's like we talked about, if people go back and probably listen to those early um, reactions to Arrow being set up and the UAP task force report and all that stuff, we said it probably looked like it was set up to fail already. Yeah, and yeah, it's 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 done that, and almost seems redundant already as an organization. Yeah, it, it's a weird one, isn't it? You know, if it was designed to cover stuff up, it's failed to do that. If it was if it was designed to be transparent, it's failed to do that. So, what the hell is it for right now? Um, I, I expect to see some more language in the legislation moving it, changing the leadership on it. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if if some people already have their eyes on Sean's replacement. Um, but his his history with the Air Force caused some concern, I, I remember, um, because the Air Force has famously been involved in the subject for so long and, and have, you know, had their fingers in multiple pies messing around. So I, I would say, you know, we, we were a little tepid, but we were supportive and wanted to give him time to, to kind of do his thing. But I feel like at this point, we've just got to call it what it is. It, it, seem, it seems like, you know, project what was it called online project blue balls 2.0 <laughs> he, he's in the death throes isn't he of his yeah. of his reign there this is the the final and I, I said to tim mcmillan it's like when a football manager's about to lose their job and they start coming yes. out and doing those really bad interviews and you see it in all kind of sports don't you live interviews they start going badly they just start naming names you know it's not their fault nothing else they could do blaming blaming the tools for the job all that kind of stuff so yeah exactly um but in terms of the hearing itself, Dan, what were some of the main kind of standout moments for you? So personally, the, the biggest standout for me was uh, Senator Ogles. Uh, he was the guy that, if people can't remember names, he just asked a bunch of yes, no questions of the witnesses. And he just went across them saying, is there evidence for this? Have you experienced this? Is Older there guy, gray hair. Old guy, gray hair. That's describes right. most of them, but <laughs> <laughs> and and he's also the the gentleman who 
said that he was going to invoke the Holman rule. Yes. Um, which is quite a controversial rule that, that is usually brought up in, you know, circumstances that are more to do with um, filibustering and kind of just taking the time in the house and, and wasting time. But it seems that this is a bipartisan effort and it could lead to one of the, the biggest uses, uh, the craziest uses of said rule to just, you know, compel people to testify to focus in on a specific program um, which so basically you're not allowed to to be picky with what programs that you're defunding and and show essentially you, you know some some ire for a particular one the Holman rule allows them to do that it basically says hey you know you you guys all agree that this program is fishy therefore you can bring legislation and really start bullying it if you want to um, so that uh, coming up and and saying that he was willing to invoke that was a big deal. Um, you know, so we're, we're, let's go on. on that because I want to ask you: uh, money is a big thing. Money, that's money, being money. Looked at in this this hearing and the paper trail, I think is is there. It's something tangible that can be gone after, as opposed to oh, David Grish tells them I know where there is a alien spacecraft, and he tells them, and it's probably already been moved, so it's not there anymore. Okay, so that's that's gone. But you, there is a paper trail normally for funds that they can at least get back to a point and say, well, these funds went from here, A to B to C to D, oh, E, F, and G are gone, and then we can't find H. And there's something kind of there that can be maybe looked at in terms of a process. But you're talking about a lot of money disappearing and black budget programs and stovepiping and all that good stuff we hear about. These people are, are really powerful and have been doing this for a long time. And personally, I think it's quite naive or can be seen as naive. It's just my opinion that a few congressmen and women going after this are suddenly going to make a big difference because you're talking about heads at aerospace companies or folks who work in DOE who have very powerful, influential friends. And and I, I was I was talking to someone, I'll just say, and I mentioned like, you know, that AOC, Andrea, what's her name? Ortesio Cortez? Uh, Alexandria. Ocasio Alexandria, Cortez. yeah. Or that Anna Paulina Luna, you know, sure. or Tim Burchett, who I don't know if he wants to be president, but I'm thinking Probably. of some of those younger up-and-coming politicians who maybe are a bit more aggressive in going for the jugular on this. Sure. There's then some of those more awkward Repu- Republican representatives, sorry, um, who whether they're Republican or Democrats who aren't so interested in the UFO topic, they are probably more likely to suddenly get a huge amount of funding from people who fund these political campaigns for presidents to run because it's expensive as opposed to a Luna or an AOC or someone like that. Because if you're if you're a higher up at Lockheed Martin and you want this to still remain secret, then do you know what, Dan, you're not too fussed on the UFO topic. You're happy to poo-poo this. I'm going to give you $200 million towards your campaign. Sure. This is a thank you. Whereas an AOC or a Luna are going to struggle to get that kind of funding. And yeah. that's great. We love how into the UFO topic they are. But the guys who don't want people to be into the UFO topic are going to help the ones that are going to kind of obfuscate that and keep it down. Is that is that not a fair way to think about it? Not yeah, that it's right. I, I would but say so. In in recent kind of elections, there's been a, a big upturn in how campaigns are, are funded in terms of, you, you know, it being crowdfunded runs. So I think it was Bernie Sanders who raised all of his money from, you know, people like you and I, the people at home that just supported the issues. But all the other politicians are still taking money from Lucky, from all these other kind of lobbying firms who, as we saw happen, you know, they were locked him out of the even the presidential race. Uh, and that's a whole controversy we won't go into. But and we have to remember that there are said to be as well like multiple organizations and places that have this material. Yeah. You know, it's not just one. So it only takes one of these places to to you know provide funding to the right person, and this all goes away. Framing it as the money issue, you know, you can see when you when you see AOC talking about this, she doesn't talk about little green men, she doesn't talk about alien bodies. You know, yeah. those claims are by the by for her. She, her angle on this whole thing is the defense spending is out of control, and I, I really love the the analogy she gave. She said trying to follow any contract to to its source is like 
realizing that three bears in a man suit organized the contract in the first place. So you just can't figure out where this stuff goes and where it comes from. Um, and, and really, a lot of the, the politicians jumping on now are kind of thinking in the same way. You know, you, that that's taxpayer money. That should be going to social programs to help people to, to places that they, you know, the elected representatives of the country designated to go. That's not happening. So money, money is essentially the thread that is going to get these politicians there if they choose to follow it this far. And yeah, we want to hear UFO this and UFO that, but you, you've got to kind of play to your audience, right? Airspace yeah. safety, money, budget, overclassification. The UFO issue isn't the only place that those things are bothering Congress. This could just be the cherry on the top that just says, right, enough of this. You know, let's invoke these rules. Yeah. Let's defund these programs. Let's give ourselves the authority to go into these places and, you know, hold these people accountable. Because it's just, it's gotten out of hand. You, you know, you, you look at the, the military budget for America and it's just insane. And yet... It's not going to change, though. No, that's not going not gonna to change. And, you know, I, I'd say not going to change in the short term. It might change in 50 years, but that's outside of our lifetime, right? And and the systems are the systems. They built yourself. to work this way. <laughs> what, lifetimes? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I still want to be around in 50 years' time. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to use the pod money to get frozen next to Disney, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> or like, yeah, the fry, fry thing, thousand years down the future. Um, <laughs> but it's still happening next year. Um, no, and that's, I think it's it's a, it's an interesting tact for them to go after in terms of, you know, money's traceable to an extent. And and like you say, forget the, the crash materials for a minute. Maybe that's, that's going to be a fruit for them. But I think politically it's a dangerous move. Not to say they shouldn't go after it, but I can just see why it's so so difficult for them um, in this. But um, best of luck to them. I think it's definitely an interesting approach. Um, David yeah, Grush's and, statements. Oh, yeah. Do you have I, any I was more just going to say more, more of them than ever before are now going to get into the skiff and see the evidence with David Grush. And we're talking the direct evidence, photographs, reports being put in touch with witnesses, being shown locations. If this stuff is compelling, expect them to have a file it under their butt to go after this stuff. And and what I love is that, like you pointed out, you know, some some of these politicians want to become president. Some of them don't. They're not interested. They just want to represent their constituents and do it right. And so it's going to be really curious seeing seeing who picks up this baton over the next few years and runs with it because we've got legislation every year now. We've got a new office seemingly every year now. Um, we've got millions being given to the office and and when everyone's hurting for budgets all across America. So yeah, it's, it's going to be a really interesting few years to see who, who sticks with it. The, the other thing that I should say really came up that was important was flagging the Department of Energy. They, they were implicated during the hearings, during Ogle, Senator Ogle's questioning. Um, we've known for a long time that the Department of Energy are kind of wrapped up in this because they're in charge of the nuclear secrets. You, you know, that's mm -hmm. kind of where that stuff lays. Um, but they don't really talk on the issue and they've never issued a statement on the issue. And it could be a God in the gaps thing, but you know, I have a feeling that someone like Chris Mellon, instead of going to area 51 to ask about crash retrieval materials, he should have gone to the department of energy. I love that more people are turned on to that now because they're going to be in the questions coming up in the future. You know, why are they implicated? What is the reason? Um, and so, yeah, we, we should, should, an emphasis on should, that's like italicized, have journalists following up and saying, you know, this is the history of them. And if you look back, you know, they were the Atomic Energy Commission, they became something else, then something else, then something else. And it, it will probably be instructive for people to go see Oppenheimer at the moment and to see how the secrecy worked there. Um, you, you know, how many lives were affected and how we didn't know about it till like years and years and years, decades mm -hmm. later. Um, you know, until that first bomb dropped, no one even knew what it was they were doing, really. Um, so we've got to, yeah, be practical and let the politicians follow this through their lens, which is air safety and being held accountable for budgets. Speculation station. I should play a little jingle there, Danny, but like speculation <laughs> station. Um, so talking about, you have a hearing and David Grush makes these statements in a public arena that, 99.99% of the public have never heard before and almost none of those politicians have heard before the 
big takeaways being, you know, he's he's basically saying, and this is what the news media picked up on, all that other stuff would not have interested almost any other news outlets. You know, even the money uh-huh. stuff wouldn't have interested them. But the fact he said that essentially, I can tell you where the alien spacecraft and bodies are, was, was yeah. the, you know, to paraphrase and bastardise it, but that's essentially what he said. Um, yeah. Surely that stuff isn't there anymore. Because I would imagine when he says it publicly, he said it behind closed doors. He's mentioned, you know, around this stuff within the Ross Coulthard News Nation pieces as well. And you would think that the gatekeepers, whatever you want to call them, the folks involved in these cover-ups that work for private contractors or within government or whatever it may be, that as soon as they get wind that this guy is going to say this or has said it, that stuff gets moved, doesn't it? And it's no longer there. Yeah, hundred percent, and and this is why we we need the evidence from the direct witnesses and the testimony, because like you say, they, it's going to be moved. They'll go, you know, the the politicians will go to one of these locations the Grouch gave them, and they'll just be an empty white room or people working on something that you know they'll go, oh yeah, this is advanced technology, but it's not UFOs, and that's the way it'll go. The the one addendum to that I would say is that Ross Coulthard has pointed out that there was a ship found that was so big they kind of just had to drag it into a mountain and leave it where it was and then declare it maybe an NSA facility. Stuff like that sometimes can't be moved. So that would be the stuff to aim for. But you know whether Grush knows to differentiate between these places, uh, I, I I don't know. But this is the importance of the DOD IG investigation. Like you say, he would have said this a year ago to people that had classification uh, Mm -hmm. or the right classification to know. So hopefully they've gone knocking on those doors and and seen, Oh wait, you've changed something here. You you're, you're kind of being shifty. You're hiding something and hiding something isn't evidence of anything. They've got to keep on. But you, you know, if those direct witnesses come forward with materials, with photos, you know, stuff like that, the conversation changes a little bit then. So uh, shall we look at that then, the kind of what next and and those kind of next steps? So let's look at what happens from a successful hearing. So, And I think we can't tell these have been successful yet other than it hit the media cycle in a big way worldwide, okay? Um, But for me, I thought next steps are we have more hearings following up with other candidates coming forward to testify and talk publicly, hopefully backing up a David Grush in his statements, more pilots talking about new incidents as well, and hopefully some folks that maybe aren't necessarily military, but, you know, scientists and whatnot coming forward to say, you know, I worked on something that I believe, you know, had really strange properties, whatever it might be. Is that is that success, or what would you see as success from these? It, essentially, we're, we're telling the public a story, aren't we? You, you know, I think of it like a, a film. You always kind of lay out your case and then you kind of go through the journey and then you get your conclusions. Right now, I would say we're at the point where you're laying out the case. We've heard Grush's evidence. We've heard the setup. Everyone in that room who's interested is going to be saying the same things as the skeptics are saying online. Time to prove it. So I would imagine that we're looking at, you know, congressional representatives will get into a skiff, uh, a secure facility with David Grush. They will see or be shown the the evidence or be be told about it. Um, They'll be able to go do their investigations. And I would hope that those investigations will inform the next set of hearings, which will no doubt be in the Senate and not the House. And that's kind of special because it's like the, you know, it's it's the bigger of the two places. It's held by the executive office, i.e., you know, who holds the presidency. So a lot more action can come from it. So essentially an increase in you know, transparency around questions. With that, we should see some awesome media coverage, you know, stepping up again, if if that proof is provided. Um, And yeah, it's it's curious as well. They they said that at the end of the hearings that they were going to have five days to submit questions to to the witnesses um, after the hearings. We haven't seen anything come out about that. So I would expect that soon. Um, So yeah, more, more hearings in the future more on public record, increased collaboration across the house. So it's more of a bipartisan effort. That's something that everyone's seeing and is, is enjoying that we're able to put politics aside and, and attack this. Um, and hopefully just less mudslinging and more of an independent panel or investigation that, that can get to the bottom of this stuff and, and be honest about it, you know? A couple of questions then 
to touch on relatively quickly, we'll try and fire through them a little bit. Um, get some hot hot takes, Dan. Hot takes. Hot, hot takes. Hot takes. <laughs> hot takes. Um, I wonder if anyone remembers Home Star Runner and Strong Bad. Oh, I that don't. was something from the early days of the internet, and it was like, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. Anyway, if anyone <laughs> does, yeah. Hi, welcome to very small. That was a good impression, and you're going to get copyright struck now. <laughs> uh, probably, yeah, yeah. Don't upload stuff that's not yours. Um, oh God, can you imagine one of my accents got picked up as something that it shouldn't have been? Anyway, let's, I mean, that, uh, yeah. that would be amazing. <laughs> by the by, um, so six months to hand over material. There was something put in the legislation, wasn't there? Yep. That uh, private aerospace companies, contractors. People who may have bits of alien spacecraft and or organic bodies, bits of bodies, whatever they may be, not to mince words, uh, have six months to hand it over and they won't face any criminal repercussions, prosecution. Um, what if there's still nothing handed in within six months? And surely those who maybe don't want to hand stuff in just have to play a bit of a, a waiting game and wait that out. And if in six months the Congress or Senate, whatever it is, turns up and still have nothing in hand, is that not goes down as a loss and you know one nil to the bad guys yeah i would agree and and we've touched on this before like who would people respect right if they came out if the politician came out and said hey we we did everything we could no one came forward with stuff therefore it can't exist people would be incensed right people in the community but people outside the community would kind of go no they gave it a fair shout and there was there was nothing there so you're right this this long game could be taking place or all they have to do is ignore it i i can't imagine that if if i mean if you were in charge of, of informing people that were working in these special locations on this exotic stuff, would you be going around telling everyone, hey, there's this legislation that's passed where you can come forward and, and you, you know, hand over material or evidence and, and have this secret out? No, like they're, they're working jobs, right? They're, they're being paid to do something and they have families to look after. They have responsibilities. So they're probably not going to be looking to, you know, rock the casbah is, is the phrase. But then we do have people like Grush that have come forward. We've heard from Jeremy Corbell that people were, were looking to this hearing, direct witnesses were looking to this hearing to see how Grush was treated so that in the future they can come forward feeling secure and safe to relay their, their stories. The people in, in charge of this cover-up should be a little nervous, I think, because the, the conditions are being set correctly to kind of say, if you come forward now, we'll respect you. We're not going to laugh you out of the hearings room. But at the same time, them, you know, one person testifying to this isn't necessarily going to break the whole thing wide open. Like you said, they can move things. They can just obfuscate it. So there's, it's an interesting cat and mouse game that's being played here. And I said it when we were looking at the legislation, but I feel like there needs to be more incentive for someone inside the program to come forward. And so far, you know, David Grush said he's come forward because he has a good sense of what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. And that this being withheld from people is wrong. That this, you know, you being told, hey, Andy, I'm making this decision for you. You don't have the right to make the decision of how you react to the fact we're not alone. Um, Grush is against that. He thinks you do have a right to make that decision. Um, and have the knowledge which, which we would agree with but we're a little biased right yeah. um there could be a reason this is withheld that's perfectly reasonable that the politicians get to and when they hear it they go oh yeah that's a security issue we're not going to repeat this so yeah there's this whole cat and mouse game but i would hope that there's something in the legislation by the time it passes this year that's a little bit more of a carrot you, you know ch chuck 100 million in for someone that comes forward or something yeah, like that because because say you come forward with your bit of a triangular craft that you think you might be working on and and you give yours over and they say thank you so much dan you've done the right thing well done but yet andy over here at andy aerospace i've kept hold of my secret stuff you don't have yours anymore dan yeah well done it. you for doing the right thing but i'm going to keep working on what i was working on before yeah absolutely and and i mean the whistleblower laws are such that they, there's no kind of line in in the law that says you're allowed to come forward and share secrets that are for the public good you know, someone working on the program wouldn't have the right to make that choice. That would be the head of the program that could yeah. do that. So, yeah, we, we need more robust legislation around this to say, yes, you know, if you're working in any program, whether it's satellites, whether it's, you know, someone that looks at a satellite that sees the rainfall in the mountains near Uganda and knows that a village is going to be wiped out by rainfall this year, you know, accumulating and becoming a, a flood. Those people should be able to come forward for the public good legally to inform on these things. Currently, there's no legislation that lets them do that. 
so we we kind of need to explore the the moral backbone of the issue i think through legislation and and what is right and what is right is always uh subjective very um the next speaking of what is right and being subjective uh, the nasa report that's due out um i'll answer first on this one dan i'm expecting a whole lot of nothing um loved speaking to nadia drake when she was on um but i think given what nadia's indications were that you know maybe or may not be in the report people are going to be very disappointed if they're expecting any kind of let's go after them their spaceships because we're not going to be getting that on on this nasa report are we no, not at all. And and I think this is to do with the way the media reported on the NASA panel. It was reported yeah. like they were going to be saying whether UAP are real or not, who's inside. And it and never was, them. even from that very no. first conference. Exactly. Like, if you watch the conference, all they're saying is that they've been tasked with going, what evidence is out there? How could we actually investigate something like this if it was real? And for me, that's a really interesting conversation because that that's starting the ball rolling. You know, that's starting to think about using scientific assets to gather data instead of, you know, a, a FLIR camera on a war machine, which isn't a scientific instrument, as, as Nadia pointed out. Um, I'm looking forward to it because it'll kind of, one, it starts dismantling the stigma around the issue. You know, if, if there's a serious, hey, you can apply X, Y, Z to it and we can make some progress and that's really cheap. I, I think people like Avi Loeb will start, you know, gunning for, for those kind of initiatives to take place but it's it's again it's the first step in many if this report is good enough nasa may or may not green light an actual investigation of the uap issue we are not going to hear them say ufos are real or ufos are not real and if you do hear anyone on the panel saying that don't really worry about it because that's not what they're being paid to do yeah. that's just an opinion they're sharing with us in the actual report, they're just going to be talking about how could we study it if we were to study it. That's it. Yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Another report, Dan, and the unclassified UAP report we mentioned earlier. They come along with buses, don't they? These reports are flying <laughs> by. If I was really cheesy again, I'd have a report, report <laughs> going by. Like um, the TIE fighter noise. Yeah, that's it. I'm just adding them in myself on this one. Those will not be a regular <laughs> feature, folks, I promise you. Um, the unclassified reports coming along. Interesting timing. Just off the back of the hearings, what are you expecting this time round? Is it Redacted City, Population Us? Yes, Redacted City, Population Us. I, I would fully expect that. Um, you know, Sean, Sean has been a little bit more forthcoming than they were during the, the AOI MSG days. So I would expect stats, I would expect numbers, I would expect a lot of obfuscating. So expect the interesting stuff to be packed into one line where he says, there are maybe 4% of cases that show some anonymous flight characteristics that we're not entirely sure how they're you know, moving or how they're doing it. As and yet unexplained be or there. not yet explained. As yet. Yeah. Exactly. It should say not yet. Um, and that should be the, the main point that everyone picks up on. It won't be. Uh, things will be downplayed. Um, but all we want to see is them drilling to that, like, you know, four to 10% of, of cases that seem anomalous. And the legislation this year seems to be pushing in that way. So I, I would expect everyone to be disappointed by the report to say it's a nothing burger. For me, it's another little piece of progress that there will be reactions to and the legislation will change probably when, when we see that report. Um and they'll specify more what should be in the reports. But like I said, the the last report that everyone kind of hated, um, that was specified by not last year's, the year before's legislation. And that legislation was written to target AOI MSG. Sean was fulfilling that capacity when he did it. Um, so we should now be seeing a little more thoroughness. But whether that is the case, I don't know. He, he might just say, you know, come time to hand in the report and he might hand in his resignation letter instead. Yeah, quite possibly. Well, on that note then, Dan, I think we'll leave it there. Uh, do you feel good about things a week later as one kind of final question? We've we've had a week since the hearing. We've seen, and I'm a little bit behind on some of the podcasts from the last week. I still have to catch Need to Know and Weaponize and a few others. But I think things have been kind of set up nicely, but I feel we might be in for maybe, in terms of the hearings anyway, a couple of months before we get any real follow-up on those. Not that we've not got the reports coming out and anything else that may happen in the meantime, but is this going to then be a kind of quieter end to the year? Or do you think we're going to get anything in terms of, you know, what's next from these? 
my my gut feeling is a, a quiet rent of the year you know that that hearing made a big splash and it might have left the media cycle but it hasn't left the mouths of you know joe public uh yeah. the, the muggles as it were we're all talking about it still we're all kind of going oh my god did you see that my mum's still sending me articles about it um, <laughs> which kind of blows my mind so i think this is a this is a slow burn everyone should be patient you, you know everything that's coming out kind of we've got time to digest it. We, we don't have to be acting like, you know, the house is on fire and no one's paying attention. People are paying attention. The processes are just slow. Even Congress is on recess at the moment. So it'll come back around. I think we'll get the next hearings. There's enough interest. And, and that's really what these hearings were designed to do, you, you know? Absolutely. Um, I just want to follow up with a couple of words, Dan. Um, murder and experiences. Because someone said they liked me saying those on the last recording. And I was going to yeah. say, say that first word again. Murder. <laughs> love it. <laughs> Can you say it? I love your accent. Murder. M- murder. 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 How do you, you say it again? Murder. Murder. Mur. M-U-R. Mur. 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 See, to me, it sounds like you're saying like M-U-H. M-U-H-D-U-H. Murder. Anyway, folks, speak soon. That is all for this week's show. Thank you very much for listening. Please remember to leave the podcast a review on your chosen platform. You can like, retweet and subscribe. That would all be very much appreciated. The shows are being uploaded onto YouTube as we speak more and more. You can sign up at patreon.com forward slash that UFO podcast to access the shows ad free as well. Please get in touch on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, that UFO podcast. Of course, on Twitter, it's at UFO, U-A-P-A-M. And again, folks, as always, keep looking up. You never know what you might see. It wasn't a tic-tac and not quite a saucer, more like a hubcap designed by Chaucer, a little Baroque and quite steampunk, like Alice was playing bass for the Parliament of The little fucker hovered right outside of my window, and when I shut out the screen, he made it an issue. I don't think he expected me to see his ass, but I'd had some champagne and smoked a little more. Meditated game of fateful on meta. I can't imagine how it could have been any better. I got to the top of the stairs and there he was. Like, you awake? I was about to abduct you, cuz. back and nearly kissed myself and I climbed out the window after the elf and I woke up in my bed and there was something on my head and everything was weird and everything was wet. I called up my boys, they thought this was noise, they thought it was a dream, they thought it was my toys, they thought it was my problems and I think I should seek therapy and I don't know what it is because it doesn't really scare me.